Now that we have the radiators installed, we have everything we need to install the Tusk uh, multifunction tack hour meter. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is use the stick on method here. And we're going to try to find a spot up here on the frame to adhere this, this meter. Then we're going to run the wires down with the rest of the, the wiring harness and we're going to wrap it a few times around the, uh, the spark plug wire to get a signal. So I'd like to make it visible on the right side of the frame, this side of the frame here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab the tank and I'm going to throw the tank on just as a kind of to allow me to see how much of this is exposed when the tank's on. So here we go. cables routed the way we want them. We just need to wrap this around the uh, spark plug wire at least five times, it says. So I'm just going to wrap until I run out of wire here. Now we just have to wait to uh, start the motorcycle to see if that's even going to work. Alright guys, we finally got the spoke torque wrench in the mail. So uh, we're going to tighten these spokes now. We're going to do a final tighten before we install the wheels, or no, before we install the tires. The way we're going to do this is we're going to locate the valve stem hole. Uh, right there, and then we're going to tighten the first spoke, skip one, two, three, and then the fourth spoke. So it's just skip two, rather. So we're going to tighten the first spoke, 
skip two, and then tighten the fourth spoke, skip two, and then tighten, I think that's what, the eighth spoke at that point, and go around one time, just tightening the every fourth spoke. Then we're gonna move on to every second spoke, or rather every, we're gonna tighten every spoke, fourth spoke, starting with the second spoke. Then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna, uh, it may be a little easier for me to show you rather than be telling you about what I'm gonna be doing. But... Okay, so we're gonna start here with this. So this is where the, um, the valve stem hole is. And then we're gonna tighten this first spoke, and I'm actually not even gonna tighten it all the way. I'm just gonna do two quarter turns, so a half turn total. I'm gonna skip two, and I'm gonna tighten this one. Uh, two quarters, so can't quite get it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip two and go for the next one. Skip two and the next one. Skip two and here we go. Time for a music montage as I go through this. All right, so now we're back around to the very first one that we tightened. Now we're gonna move on to the next one down, this one here, and we're gonna tighten that one, skip two, and then tighten that one. So that's how this goes, it's a progressive tightening all the way around, and each time you skip two, you're actually alternating which spoke side you're tightening. So here we go, second round. Now we're back around to the beginning again. Now we're gonna go with the third one and skipping two each time. So that's one full rotation. We're back around to the valve stem hole here. Uh, none of them actually activated the torque wrench, so we have to do a couple more rotations to get them to start clicking. one. So at this point what we have is uh, probably 80% of the spokes tightened to spec. So what I'm going to do now is actually just go one spoke at a time and make sure they're all tight. Um, there might be one or two that need a final tightening, but they're all really close if not already tightened to spec. So now just one spoke at a time. Okay, that's every spoke tightened to torque. Now the last thing we have to do, well besides poking the hole in our shirt with that pokey thing, is just make sure that by doing that we didn't mess up, uh, mess up any of the run out or um, what's the other thing, lateral movement, right? So we just need to make sure that it's still trued. So we're gonna do that with this right here. Just check to see if it's still true. You can see a little wobble. It's absolutely not true at all. So for this, I'm just gonna use the tightening, not the torque wrench, but the tightening one. And I'm just gonna try and take that left, right lateral movement out. We got most of the left right out of it, but now there's a little bit of hop in the, uh, so we're gonna do the, uh, the run out really quickly, and then we'll be back to true, and we'll know that everybody's tight. The low spot right here. All right, there we go. We got it trued up, back to where it was. Um, before we tighten it down and now everything is tight. So the next step is to take all this down and um, do the rear wheel.
This is the same exact process for the rear wheel. So uh, we're just gonna go through the same thing. It's just there's far fewer spokes, so it should take theoretically less time. All right, one time around. All right, that's all of them tightened to torque. Now we just have to make sure the things balance correctly. Not balance. Balance isn't the right thing. It's the run out. It's just the run out. Oh yeah, it's, it's off. All right, there we go. It's pretty damn true. Both ways. It's pretty good. You can see the, you can tell, you know when you're getting it close, when you can tell where this, the weld seam is when you're spinning it, because the weld seam causes a little disruption in the, in, the, in the wiggle, it gives a little wiggle to it. So you spin it around and everything else is so tight, lateral and vertical, but then the weld seam starts to throw you off because it causes a little bit of a visual thing. So uh, we're gonna put on the tires and then we'll have at that point a rolling chassis. We can assemble the drivetrain, the remainder of the exhaust, and then we're looking down the barrel of um, bodywork. So. so I'm gonna get tires and tubes installed on the rims. We're gonna start with the front tire. This isn't necessarily a tire installation instruction video, more so just walking you through this part of the build where I'm putting the tires on the bike. So here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just talk about the tire that I bought. It's a Bridgestone Battlecross X30. Um, I went with this, it's a, an intermediate terrain, a medium terrain, because I figured it has the widest range of capabilities. It's not a hard terrain and it's not a soft terrain tire. Up here where I live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, it's generally accepted to use a soft terrain um, tire, which is typically a harder rubber with more aggressive lugs. Uh, this is sort of a medium uh, with some moderately aggressive lugs, uh, but it's generally regarded as one of the better tires on the market. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is put a couple tablespoons of actually baby powder into the tire. And what that's gonna do for us is that's going to um, prevent the tube from chafing as, as the tire gets, uh, as the tire sort of settles into its new, or as the tube settles into its new home. And all I'm gonna do is just work that baby powder around in a circle and make sure that it, it's sort of evenly dispersed on the interior of the tube all the way around. It's like you're butter flour baking, like a baking dish. It's snowing. <laughs> so that was maybe a little too much. Probably gonna have some uh, baby powder just come spilling out throughout the installation process. Um, but yeah. Stop it. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I need to get this rim <laughs> off my bench and I want to install the tube in here and add a little bit of air. This is an STI heavy duty uh, tube meant for this size of um, wheel. I got an 80, 100, uh, 21 inch rim. So this is the tube that goes in the front. We're gonna just put it into its groove here and um, we're gonna fill it up with a little bit of air. So that doesn't even register on this on the pressure gauge. It's probably like two pounds or something, if that. So, all right. So we've got the rim lock lined up with the lightest point of the tire. We've got the valve stem lined up with the uh, with the hole in the valve stem. And the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna rotate this through the valve stems around here. Um, we're gonna just put the valve stem through the hole in the rim. So we may even have to pull the tube out a little bit from the tire to get it out far enough to come into the hole in the, the valve stem hole in the rim. And then we're going to actually thread on a little nut to keep that in place. So just um, halfway maybe and hand tight here. Actually, you know, I'm gonna try and cheat. I'm gonna see if I can get the outside bead seated just by putting it on the ground and then pushing the rim in. Sometimes you can get lucky that way. So This isn't going to work all the way around, but it sometimes is. It, it, you can get away with just pushing the, way, 
the outside bead around. So that's about as far as I'm going to make it here. Now it's time to lubricate the bead and start using tire irons. So they make special um, tire assembly paste and tire assembly lube, but I don't have any of that and I'm not going to go buy some. So what I have here is just some dish soap and water mixed together. And that should be sufficient to lubricate the bead. You might have to rub it because rubber doesn't want to have anything to do with water in a lot of cases. Now I'm going to be using um, these Bead Pro tire bead breaker levers as tire irons. They're Emotion Pro Bead Pro tire irons and, and they have a bead breaker on one side and then they have tire irons on the other. So we're going to be using these as our tire irons. And I'm be using some rim shields here to try and protect my rim as I work my way around. Obviously it's a brand new wheel so I don't want to mess it up. So. I'm not sure whether it's easier to go from the other side and push it, or whether it's easier to go from this side and pull it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like pushing it might be easier. So maybe they can see what you're actually doing. One thing I don't want to have happen is have both sides of the tire getting onto the beat immediately, otherwise I'll never get it. Okay, now we have to deal with the rim lock. We got the stupid thing halfway on. Deal with it now. And actually it should be easier to deal with now than it was before. Let's see if we can get this thing up over the rim lock here. Ah, oh, so much easier. So now it's not all the way. We want to actually push it, not squish it. Um, over the over the edge a little bit. And I kinda want this this rim shield off so that I can put it over here and go either side of the rim lock with a tire iron. Let me lay this down. It might be a little easier to see for everybody and for me to not have to balance. All right. So now we're going to lift the bead out and over the top of the rim lock. Now it's completely over the top of the rim lock. Now what we should be able to do here is push the rim lock up all the way. Push that bolt, we wanna make sure the bolt's backed off. Push the rim lock up all the way. And then we're gonna actually drop the bead of the tire underneath the rim lock, in between the rim lock and the rim. Just like that. Now, <clears throat> to put on the other half, uh, I'm gonna start again at the valve stem and work my way around. And actually what you should do is you should operate it away from you so that you can hold the tire on the opposing side with your stomach. You're, you're applying pressure. And this is where we get to use the bead buddy. And we're going to take our first tire iron. This first part should be easy, but what I should mention is you tuck the tire up against your stomach and you pull so that you're creating space and over the top and then you want to take a second one and we're going to just back it off a little a little bite. Now we have a bead set up here so I'm going to create a little bit of space with our uh, with our two rim shields. In fact, I'll just pull that one out and we're going to take this Motion Pro Bead Buddy and we're going to slip it in between the rim and the, and the tire Right where we've created this connection here. Easier said than done. Yeah, there's not quite enough space. And then we're going to slide it around a spoke, and that's going to hold that bead. 
so that we can work our way around the tire progressively okay. and we'll finish right here. Okay, so see this here where the rim shield is, it wants to be in, it keeps getting sucked in to the rim. That's telling me that it's got a hold of the tube. It's like pinching a portion of the tube. And so the tube is actually underneath and then whenever I let go, it inflates. And so what you have to do is you have to be very careful. The rim shields are unlikely to pinch these tubes, but um, you can't use the tire iron with the, with the tube like that because it'll cause a, a pinch. So, yeah, you can hear it when it let go. So I'm gonna actually put the rim shield in even further down over here. Let's see if I can get a hold. Now that, see how it doesn't want to slide? So then I'm just gonna bring that around here. We're coming around here. This last bit, again, you gotta back off the tire and even get the, the second one in there. And at this point, you're there. All you need to do is just pop it and it'll pop up. So, the next step is to seat the bead. This thing's no longer doing anything, so it can slide out. And in order to seat the bead, you just need to fill it up with air. It's not quite seated all the way around. I'm not sure if that has to do with this rim lock causing an issue or what. So I'm just gonna give it a couple of bounces. So it's kind of like a mountain bike tire seating trick. Yeah, it's on now. It, it jiggled, at least on that side it is. Yeah, it jiggled that into place. There you go. All right, so the rim lock is tight. And now we're just going to put on the couple of nuts for the valve stem and the valve stem cap. So the second nut's gonna come on here, the valve stem cap, and you wanna thread the valve stem cap all the way down till it stops. And then to keep crap out of the threads of the valve stem cap and to lock the cap on there, you just thread this up. And then again, it's not even tight. Watch out here. It's not even tight, it's more like just up against it as a lock nut. So now it's time to move on to the rear tire. this very good last time so I wanted to make sure I show you guys this time. We need to get this bead of this tire on this edge up and over the, the rim lock here. We actually have to get it 
on this side in between the rim lock and the rim. So there's a couple ways to do it, but I think last time what I did was put a couple rim shields on here. And then I basically just reached across and lifted, lifted this up and pushed down on the rim like that. See, that slipped. And now it's in the center. Now what we have to do is get it in the middle. So this usually is a two iron job. You stretch the tire out on one side and out on the other side. We're grabbing hold of the tire here, either side of the rim lock, giving it plenty of space to move, maneuver. We don't want to interfere with the rim lock. I'm going to kind of pull up like this together. And we're going to try and bring it over the top of that lip on the rim lock. And then we're going to push the rim lock all the way up into the, the wheel by pushing on the bolt on the stud. It's poking out just like that. And now, I know, I know you can't really see it in there, but what we've done is we've slipped that far edge um, inside, of the, inside of the tire. And so now we're going to drop this the bead of the tire down between the rim lock and the rim. And now that side of the rim lock is seated. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's difficult to explain. But basically we just lifted out the edge, pushed the rim lock up out of the way, dropped the, dropped the bead of the tire into that gap, and then let the rim lock come back down. And now for this side, we're on to the other side here. <laughs> Next up, we're going to put the chain on. I don't have a riveting tool, so I'm going to have to cut the rivets uh, with the Dremel tool. After putting on the chain, we're going to be um, checking the drive checking the transmission setup by operating the drive and making sure that we can shift through all the gears, including, including neutral. Okay, this uh, new chain is 120 links, the, uh, so it's gonna need to be cut down. The old chain is 100, and I just counted it out, it's 115 links plus the master. So the table, the manufacturer spec, calls for 113 links.
that's pretty perfect right there. You bring it down further. Okay. That's basically perfect right there. Okay, before we do the exhaust, um, the, the rear stinger, the, the spark ruster, I actually want to check the transmission. If you've done transmission work, I recommend you do this, especially clutch work, transmission work, by shifting through the gears, first, neutral, second, third, fourth, fifth, and running the rear tire, spinning the rear tire to run the drivetrain. So that's what we're going to do next. Even though everything's not tightened down, I'm actually going to run it through. Um, the front sprocket's tight enough to hold for just a quick transmi transmission check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the rear tire in a forward direction. Currently it is in neutral as indicated by the clutch being out and the uh, gear the gear turning without having the clutch in. So yeah, so we're going to go down into first, pull on the clutch, down into first while I rotate this. Okay. Yep. I let out the clutch. I should be able to run this. Not in It should spin the transmission. Oh, it's not going to move the top end. So if I do this here, I mean, apparently it's working. Apparently it works, so we don't we don't mind. It's not a very good started. test. Yeah. Okay. All right, clutch in. Clutch in up to neutral. Wait, when the clutch is in, I should be able to That's move this. That's what I was thinking. How come I can't move it? I'm still running the transmission, even though the clutch is all the way in. Okay, so this may be an artifact of the clutch not having any oil, mm -hmm. so it's not slipping like it ought to. Go ahead and pull the clutch in and go to third. There. The clutch is in, right? Yep. Put the clutch out. Okay, there we go. Now, pull the clutch in. That didn't... Alright, now, fourth. I'm trying to get it into fourth. Okay. There you go. Clutch out. Stops me. Okay, clutch in. How many gears does this have? Five. Up into fifth. Okay, are you gonna roll it? I can't. I physically couldn't. Up into fifth. Alright, I'll clutch back in again. <laughs> Top gear, fourth gear. Put the clutch out. Okay, clutch in. I know how to do this now. Third gear. Oh, good job. Oh, man. Oh, oh. All right. There's no oil, so we gotta get a little ginger here, Brittany. Down, second gear. Second gear, good. Sweet. <laughs> First gear. Please, man. Cold. I can't. There's no oil. First gear. Alright. Okay, now neutral. Yeah, now neutral. Okay, clutch in. Yep. I don't know if that's halfway or not. Nope. You'll be able to tell halfway. If not, this is this one is of those off. that you have to get used to the feel. Can you do the, the rotating? You'll feel why I can't turn it. Can you do it Nope, that's the wrong way. Yeah. Alright, still in first. We're gonna go up into neutral. There's neutral. Definitely a different transition. So we went through all the gears and we confirmed that if the oil, if the clutch had oil, it probably would have been a lot smoother. So next we're gonna put on the uh, put on the muffler, the, or the spark arrestor and stinger, sometimes it's called. The one thing we have to do before we can do that is we have to put some rubber grommets in these aluminum holes here. Um, so I'm gonna take over to the bench and we're gonna do that and get this all set up. <laughs>